Forget about the dog. Okay. 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 Think, let's look at the, we're in the year 2015, right? Women who are single, who are not married. Okay. What, what do they have in their, most women who are single, what do they have in their houses? TV? Dog. No. They don't have dogs. The women are not into dogs TV, as much. TV, phone, computer. No, but you're close. Give me something else besides a dog. Has three letters also. Begins with letters. Cat. C. Cat. A cat. Cat. Ah. Uh, do they live with a cat? Yeah. They don't have sex with a cat. People, you know, they, 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 they have shows, you know. What, what do people hold when they sleep? They hold their pillow, their spouse, their blanket, their pet. Yeah. Most cat owners, the cat sleeps in the bed with them. With them, yeah. Dog Most cat. dog owners yeah. sleep in the okay. I'm not going to tell you what, the dog, what it means. The mentors can say a thousand different things. People who are lonely, it's not unusual to have a pet and that they're very close to the pet. So it can be, it can be interpreted on many different levels. Why we have a Pasha called Bullock? You're right. The Pashyot that have names to it, they're not always the best. Noah was a good guy, not the best. Chayesora was okay. Pinchas was a decent guy, a little bit, uh, got angry a little bit, and a little bit extreme. I don't know why we'll go through those things. Yisro was okay. Sometimes you can learn from your friends, you can learn from your enemies. Mm -hmm. I didn't give the names to the Pashyot, so I'm not really sure why we have a Pasha named Bolo. But there was clearly lessons to be learned from it. But there were a lot of things to be learned from Bolo, and there were a lot of things to be learned from Bilo. And they, were, they had a lot of opportunities. They had opportunities change. to become better, to change. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it brings down over here the Tolna Rebbe. Very interesting, the Tolna Rebbe. He says, your question to a degree. He says, if Bilam was as great as Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How could he be so stupid? Mm -hmm. How could he make so many mistakes? How could, he, how could he do the things he did? He asked that question. And he gives a very interesting answer. And listen to his answer. He says, if a person goes through school, elementary school, high school, four years college, Professor. graduate school, and he works at something for 20 years, he appreciates what he has. If I take somebody who never went to school and I give him the same job, what does he appreciate? Nothing. 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 Easy come, easy go. Yes. He says a person works from was poor and becomes very rich, and the next guy wins the lottery for a hundred million dollars. Yeah, it never works. He, it doesn't work. He'll be broke again in, in six months. Yes. The Tolna Rebbe says for the Mesilas Yishor, he says Moshe worked his whole life to become who he was. Yes. You know, there's a period of Moshe's time, like forty years. We don't know what happened during those forty years. He became from whoever he was to Eight. Moshe Rabbeinu. Bilam never worked at it. Hashem needed someone. Bilam may be the best of the worst. So the Goim should not say, if we had a Moshe Rabbeinu. He says he never worked at it. He never appreciated it. He got it as a gift. And therefore, he didn't learn the lessons. He didn't struggle. Mm -hmm. And therefore, get killed. killed. You easy come, easy, easy go. go. That's what the Tolna Rebbe says. It's a very interesting thing the Tolna Rebbe says. Okay, listen to this. I want to share Ready. with you a story. One question. Yeah. But this possible if the, the Balad he would escape uh, the Jewish uh, with Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, the kill Ox, uh, the Sihon, uh, and he scared the. They, they, they possible to go to be uh, not war with them, but make a peace. Sure, it was possible. They, they weren't allowed they, to attack. They were so, so smart. Why did not take this way? So you know, it's an old answer that they give to them. First of all, Moshe was told he could not attack Moab. They were cousins. Yeah. You know what, Bullock, You know, if a person hates a Jew. If you really hate a Jew, you don't want to live in the same world with a Jew. That means to make peace means you leave me alone, I leave you alone. Mm -hmm. But if I don't like you, you can't leave alone. I can't live knowing that you're over there and you're doing okay. Uh, destroy you. You understand? 
if I don't, <coughs> if I, if I have no feelings, the United States, you know, in World War Two, we didn't, the French, the English, and they don't bother us. With, but after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese, if the Japanese would have said, okay, we'll make peace, no way. The United States wasn't going to make peace with Germany or Japan until after the war because they were angry, mm -hmm. okay? They were angry from Pearl Harbor. They were angry at what was going on in the Atlantic. Yes. Balak hated the Jews. Mm -hmm. Peace was not even an option yeah. because peace means you're okay and I'm okay. Yeah. That, that was, was not an close. option. It's not working. That wasn't going to work for him. Either I, you help me to destroy them or you're worthless to me. Either to the end between no, no, no. Israel and the but no, no, I understand the, uh, they hate the Jew and could, but they, I think if they're smart, they see, they uh, kill the... How many home, people who hate and, and angry are uh, smart? That means this Hakino, Hataiva, when you hate someone, when you're angry, you're not thinking. Yes. My, my Most people, when they're angry, they're not using their head. They control themselves. But could, the person couldn't be uh, always be angry. Correct. And maybe so, at some uh, point he should have made peace. When the people, the angry. Do you know when the Jews attacked Moab? When was the first time the Jews attacked Moab? Do you know when? No. Who was the first person? Did Joshua attack Moab? No. no. Did Moshe? No. no. Two sons to kill the 24,000 people. No, the they didn't attack Moab. They, they, yes, that's when they attacked Moab to revenge those 24,000. Yeah, After that, you know when the next time was? David HaMelech. David HaMelech. Almost destroyed all of Moab. He, he, he know destroyed why? Yeah, Because he heard about the, somebody touched them for Jewish people. No, you know why? Why? When Shaul HaMelech wanted to kill David, yes. David was afraid for his family. So David took his family, his parents, and his family, and he sent them to Moab for protection. Uh, you know why Moab? Because his great-grandmother was from Moab. Uh, you know what the king of Moab did to his family? He killed them. He killed the parents? Yes, David and Melech's parents. You wow. didn't know this. The king of Moab killed David and Melech's family that David and Melech sent. Wow. Oh. He when, sent the safe and then killed them. That's right. When that happened, when David Amal became king, the first thing he did okay. was an, organize an army. He almost wiped Moab off the map. Mm -hmm. There was no mercy. Mm -hmm. But all those years from after this story until David Amal, mm -hmm. was a few hundred years, mm -hmm. nobody touched Moab. Mm -hmm. They were under no threat because they were cousins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were from Lot. Yeah. Dover yeah. HaMelech was the one who attacked because they killed his family. Okay? Yeah, Lishai and Yeah, Lishai and his, fa and his children. Yeah, that's right. Listen to this story. I want you to hear the story very carefully. It's on the net. You can download it. I, I downloaded it. I had read it someplace else, but it's, it's relatively new. There was a tremendous Rosh Hashiva in pre-war Europe. And he was known as Reborach Ber Leibowitz. Leibowitz. You may never have heard of him. I've heard of him. I have his books that he wrote. Reborach Ber Leibowitz was a tremendous Rosh Hashiva. And his students include Rav Ruven Grozovsky and Rav Shlomo Hyman, who started Yeshiva Torah Vadas, Rav Aaron Kotler, who started Lakewood Yeshiva, Rav Avrom Kalmanovich, who started the Mir Yeshiva, uh, and, and others. These were all his students. So most of the yeshivas that we have today were started by the students of Reb Baruch Ber. They don't have many pictures of him, but the pictures of him look horrible. He has bushy hair, his fiery eyes, he looks very scary. I think they have a picture of him here, but he looks scary. In one of the base Yaakov's, they, were, they had pictures up of all different great tzaddikim. And as the girls were learning about each of the different tzaddikim, in one of the classes, when they had this picture of Reborach Ber, one of the girls said, 
look at that guy. He looks ugly. Mm. That afternoon, she was stricken with a disease of uh, Bell's palsy. Within an hour, the girl suddenly was stricken with Bell's palsy, a condition that involves paralysis of half your face. Half wow. your face. Paralyzed. Paralyzed. They called the father. The father was from America. The father came, flew to Israel, and they went to Rav Leif Steinman. Rav Leif Steinman is from the Ger Rebbe. Oh. And the Ger Rebbe said, there's only one thing you can do. Your daughter has to go with a minion, with ten men, to the grave of Rav Baruch Ber Leibowitz, and she has to ask forgiveness. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't sound so complicated, except nobody knows where Rav Baruch Ber Leibowitz is buried. They know that he died in Vilna, uh -huh. and that he was buried in Vilna. Oh, Vilna had three cemeteries. Yeah. One was destroyed by the Nazis, one was destroyed by the Russians coming in. Uh -huh. There's one that remains, it's a very large cemetery, and, and there's another small one. But the larger one has the Vilna Gaon and Rechaim the different oh, yeah. graves that are in there. So, Rav Leif Steinman said, there is a rabbi here in Israel, Rabbi Gabai, I think a Sephardi rabbi, Rabbi Gabai, and he has abilities to locate graves all over the world, and he's the one who's going and trying to find all these old graves. Go consult with him. So Rabbi Gabai found three people who remembered the funeral of Rabbi Baruch Ber in Vilna. It was in a cemetery called the Z Zercha Cemetery. I never heard of that. Um, where was it? I'm just looking over here. Uh, I guess I should have published. This is just one. But the, the, that's what I think it was. The, the Zercha Cemetery, um, which he was able to find. And they remembered a little bit, a little bit of some of the details of... Oh, I know why, because it's on the other side. They, they found a little bit of the Zaretcha, Z-A-R-E-T-C-H-A. -E that was, it was the base olam. Three people remembered it. They remembered that it was near some steps going down, but they couldn't remember much of the location. Then came a fascinating fact. When Raborach Bear died, he left instructions. He wanted to be buried next to his father. Hmm. This cemetery was full. There were no spots. Now, when you bury people, you bury them straight. You know, like one, next, right? You know, you bury like this, rows, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were all in rows like this. There was no space. It was full. So they went to Reb Chaim Ozer, and they asked Reb Chaim Ozer, they said, he wanted to be buried next to his father. There's no place next to his father. Mm -hmm. So we want to bury him someplace else. Reb Chaim Ozer says, no, you've got to find the way. So look what they did. You've got you to gotta watch this very carefully. Mm -hmm. Let's say these are three graves like this. Mm -hmm. Over here was a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So you know what they did? They buried, This is his father's grave. They buried him this way on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So this way, now when you're walking the sidewalk, you have to stop. There was a grave, mm -hmm. and then there was the sidewalk continued. Wow. So everybody was buried this way. One grave was buried this way. Oh. So he took an infrared camera. He got a helicopter. He took a picture of the cemetery from a, from a, you know, from a helicopter yeah. with an infrared. Yeah. And he could see all the graves outlined like this, right? Uh -huh. And one grave he saw this way. Uh -huh. That's okay. That was Rebar. Wow. <laughs> and they marked it off. And she flew to... Vilna with ten people and she went to the grave he said Reborach had been identified without a shadow of a doubt and they flew to the grave and she asked forgiveness <clears throat> within an hour her face went back to the way it was before wow. the bell's palsy left huh. and she the, looked the picture she, she, she said this word no. yeah wow. 
<laughs> and it brings down over here that now that they found the grave, they did get permission from the city to put a, a matseva on the grave. What's a matseva? A monument, you know, a, monument. a stone. And his 75th yurtzeit was this year, and on the fourth day of Kislev, which means in December of this year, 5775, this year, they, they put up the monument. So that's when this was written. This was put out. This was uh, 2015. This was put up uh, on November 17, 2014. This was written mm -hmm. and it was published. And they just put up the Matseva. So now, if you go to the Vilna Cemetery, they have a Matseva. You now, you can see here the picture of them laying the foundation uh -huh. of the Matseva for a Borch Berlibowitz. Vilna is the German? Vilna no. is Lithuania. 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 Lith